everybody, welcome back. We have work to do, so thank you so much for joining me. This way I can go about my orchid hobby and talk to you and explain things as I'm going along. I really appreciate having you here. There are some times in the orchid hobby that, you know, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. We have circumstances of procrastination, like me and my Francis Fox over there. I need to get that situated into the pot properly. My resident gecko, oh well, he's welcome in my collection. It's the first time he's ever done anything and it's all loose and wobbly and I believe I have absolutely no roots because normally that wouldn't happen if a gecko brushes against it. And if you remember Holdenii, ho oh, ho, from the tea, my tea bath and all that business. It's time to move her into a pot, get her situated and get her ready for somebody else. And when I say trial and error, we have to adjust and watch the orchids as we try to get them to transition to the way, in my case, I want them to grow. My Zorbenikofia, aren't you proud of me? Zorbenikofia, I remembered, yes. It's doing something, it's doing fantastic, it's doing too well. I need to make some adaptations in order for it to grow the way I would like to see it grow. So I will go and explain that. But first of all, because I really don't want to jeopardize Holdenia, I've been working too hard on keeping this one and making it into a success. Look at that. It is time to raise this baby and put her in her own pot. And why does one root have to go up? All the moisture, all the humidity is down there. No, one root has to go up. So as much as I would like a longer root system, I do not want this one to be that aerial so fast. So this one we're gonna work with first. Now this pot looks like it's a way too big for the Holdenii and its limited root system. But I have my reasons and I shall explain. I would like the roots to go down into the media without being affected by the edge of the pot too soon. I can see that one root, that long one, already wants to do its own thing. And why is it not doing its own thing by going down towards the moisture? I do not know. But what I'm going to try and do is tempt it to go down into the moisture by volunteering a bigger pot, situating it lower, and this is going to be a, pot, a repeated theme for my Zobenikofia here as well. I have been practicing Zobenikofia. I have. This other thing, other word, I'm not even going to bring it up, that I kept repeating in the video, my brain now knows it is my Zobeni coffee. Now, for the Holdenii, what I want to do is make sure that I have my bulk on the bottom. So I'm going to add quite a bit of lecker on the bottom. And I have my ceramus, which is going to be more to the surface because that's what the roots were in from Jump Street. So that I'm going to mix up. But first, the lecker. As per usual, I have lifted the microfiber up and I've created a loop. So now the wicking process is reached up to here in the pot, as opposed to just being on the bottom. I think I'm going to need some more ceramus soon. Oops. One doesn't just order ceramus, right? Especially if it's from Bichmann. One orders orchids, but we'll have to see. So I've done deck on the bottom and it will meet the ceramus straight away. And I'm going to mist this off immediately.
Now this ceramic has been washed and recycled, etc. That's why it has some she seashells in it. It's not something I do all the time, but I do not spend time removing seashells either. So there's no harm, no foul. I had them in there for calcium. Now I hope we make a little hole, a little nest, and check that everything is wet. There was still dry ceramic. The reason I am so pedantic about keeping it wet is because the Holdenii roots have been in nothing but wet ceramics and a layer of water. So I'm going to continue that atmosphere and ambience for them. Now, the new growth, you can see it right here from the cutting. It is well established. So what I'm going to do, I have no problem now laying down the orchid in order to accommodate the long root. This is priority. That's why it's not going to go into the pot bolt upright. And that's why I chose a bigger pot. So it can settle in there nicely. It is also lower in the pot than I would normally do. But that is all in order to protect those roots and get them used to being in a larger environment, a little less wet, let's just say, for the lack of a better word. But I want to see if I can get that one root to grow down. If it doesn't, there were plenty, plenty other roots that have the downward orientation in their growth habit. But right now, I'm greedy. You've heard me say many, many times, oh, I'm not worried, I've got plenty in the, in the pot. I don't mind a root drying out on the top, etc., etc. And I don't. But this is case specific. And I want this to be a success because I have this allocated for somebody. And we haven't gone through all this trouble throughout these months to stop it from improving and growing on beautifully until it goes to its new owner. So you can see all the root tips right there. I'm covering it up and that includes covering up the rhizome. It has been in this environment for a while and that's how it's going to stay. Every day I will be watching and watering and misting this one. I am not filling the reservoir just yet because there's no need. Hang on a second. I'm not going to get so bold as to have water in the crown even though it's hot and windy because where this one's going to go it's going to be shady and protected but it is on the move it is in the right location it has a pot that gives me room for celebration moving on to the next one Slobinikofio Bumbertiana I'm proud of myself switch the head, get the gear back. We've just looked at this. We've just bothered it. We've just, you know, tried to train a root. And it's doing fabulous. So much so, I have to do something about it. Because this root does not want to do what I want it to do. Check it out. This is where it's going along. That root is extending, that's great. But here you can see the root under the leka and look at the bulge I created, it's going up. It has risen at least a centimeter since, which is a wonderful sign. But you're doing it wrong, you're going in the wrong direction. It has to go down. So what I'm planning to do is exactly the same as with a Holdenii but in a bigger pot, because I'm not going to stress that root out. I want the root to grow well, but it's gonna go in a bigger pot, same principle. And I'm filming this simply because we've just had a look at it. 
and it wasn't that long ago and it's responding magnificently and I wanted to document that and show you because when I play with roots I'm always very very nervous so first things first let's prep the new pot with the microfiber it's going to go lower in the pot as well because I definitely, definitely want to have that root going down into the media. And it may still resist, but I have option number two, the other little stump growing, and I will maintain it in a humid environment. This will also allow me to spray it less, making it less risky to develop any kind of rot. And I'm saying that as well now, it's hot, it's dry. Um, we're up into 30, 32 degrees Celsius late afternoon. But what happened to my Fios gave me pause. Because I love my spray bottle. I'm all, I'm like with two spray bottles on the go, one left, one right, spraying everything down. But that thing with the Fios, that made me think, why? Maybe it's just a fires thing. I don't know. But I have to be a little bit more careful. All right. There's not much to do. See, the other roots are still doing fine. But this one is the one I'm interested in. And look at that gorgeous, gorgeous growing tip. So you see, by upping the pot size, there is no stress to the root tip or anything like that. And I'm going to keep it a little bit lower and fill her up. So the same principle as before, just a little mound, a bigger mound this time, trying to convince it that I know what's best for it. <laughs> it's like dealing with a child. I'm telling you this is better for you and the plant is like going, no, I'm showing you it's not. I don't want to go down and I'm like, you will go down. Uh, let's hope, let's hope we both win at the end. It's not a competition. It's about seeing how to better take care of this plant without spoiling it. But that growing lengthy large root tip is giving me a lot of hope. The next thing that we can do is watch and see if it comes out on this end here. That's the direction. It's going the same length across the length of this leaf and it's right there. And if it comes and peeks out over the top, Yes, then you know what, then I'm just going to leave it be in this pot because I have enough media now over the main stem of the root to hydrate, hydrate the orchid. My microfiber goes back to tempt this root nub in here because I really want it to go down as well. So she's a bit wonky in the pot, that is the plan, stay wonky and into her shady place she goes. Check the reservoir, all good. We have hydration going, perfect. My Francis Fox from Schwerter. I bet there are no roots in here, but that's okay. I see a new growth coming. She just needs a bit more love than I've been giving her. And she gets a fancy, fancy white support as compensation for my neglect. Look at that. There's nothing of any substance that I could speak of here. I always thought, oh, I'm going to film it. I'm going to film it. I got to wait. I got to wait. No, no. You got to do what needs to be done straight away when it comes to orchids, or sometimes you can pay the price. 
So these liquors are not even attached to anything. But that's my little, sorry little Richara Francis Fox. This is last year's growth. And you can see that it tried to do buds and all that, but the foliage just went, died on me. And this whole centerpiece just dried up and went woody. I was very concerned when I saw that. And look at these roots. I mean, some of them are still viable, but they're nothing to write home about. They're firm, surprisingly, they're firm. Super interesting, these back ones, not really. But I'm going to, I'm leaving them. I'm not going to cut them off. I need something to anchor her and help out a little bit. So this was this year's growth. And she did bloom, which was wonderful. One bud didn't make it, but one did. So we had one bloom to the show for. And then now she's growing a new growth down here. So let's get you positioned, safe and secure, the way you deserve to be. Oh, I love the summer. Did you see that? Classic move of removing unwanted water. Look at this nasty pot. I'll be right back. There's dead roots in here. I was going to reuse the media, but I'm going to be decent about this. There's no point in putting that back. She's going to get fresh lecker, fresh support, and hopefully she will forgive me for not doing my job very well. I do miss her every morning, but now with the new growth starting, it's like, no, I don't want to. Risk it. Hi, Thierry. Hey, Munchkin. What's up? Let me get rid of this. So let's put you back. And I'm also going to keep her a little bit lower so that any new roots go straight in to the pot instead of starting to clamber out all over the place. So from a repotting point of view, my strategy here is everything a little bit lower. Sometimes it helps to reassess what is going on and what is not going on and how can it be improved. And in this case, all of them were lowered into the pot lower than I normally would do. The one thing I am watching out for in this case is this new growth here, because that is my that is my future. I don't mind the back being so low. I'm okay with that. There's no leka in the back here that is going to compromise those those old bulbs or the rhizome. So this may look a bit odd, but. The future is down here. Look at this lecker piece. What's this? I'm not too concerned about these bulbs being back here. What I really need to be concerned about is that this new growth in the front here does not fail. She is not the strongest of plants. I won't. Yes, I will. She came from Schwerter. And it's always like a little reminder of how careful I have to be with most of my orchids from Schwerter. I've had her two years, well, a year and a half, and I have nothing much to show for. Some of it I will take responsibility for, and some of it definitely not. And I'm going to, in her case, because these roots on the top are used to it, I'm going to, in her case, put some sphagnum moss on. So I didn't cut any roots because the two or three strands in the back that weren't viable, I'm not going to worry about those. Seeing as everything else in here is, I don't want to fuss around too much because I can get carried away when it comes to chopping off roots. And in this case, that is definitely not necessary. Once she's older, 
and more situated, more established, I can get radical and not worry about it. But, in, but now it's all about getting the roots into the pot, the ones that are branching, and getting this new growth to establish itself. So now what's left to do is to just secure her to the support. Seeing as this was the whole point of this unpotting, and let's get her secure. And then we can put her back in her place and leave her alone until there's time to show an update, right? However, because it's hot, normally I like to show all, all the ones we've worked with today, but because it's hot, I prefer to leave them where they are and just say thank you ever so much for watching. If there are any questions that have arisen from the resituation of all these orchids, why I've done what I've done, and if I haven't finished a train of thought, please, please, Give me a heads up and let me know and I'll be very, very happy to address everything and qualify what I've done. In the meantime, everybody, please stay safe out there. And fingers crossed that Frances Fox will do her thing. I appreciate your company. Thank you so much for joining me. And everybody have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Bye.